On this episode of Content Sessions, we talked to Donald Littlewood about Liberty Clinic. Thanks so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I came across you through Laura Tucker. Yes. Um, and then I started following your Instagram stories specifically, <laughs> um, and I was like, "Shit, you got to get on here." Oh, so thank you. I'm super glad you came out. Uh, so, talk to me a little bit. Tell the audience a little bit about uh, the business. Um, how long you've been around, what you do. Cool. Um, so I'm a chiropractor um, and I've been in practice actually two years this weekend, which is very exciting. Congrats. Um, so I have been in the same location um, for that whole time and just trying to build my business um, from the ground up. Awesome. Yeah. And so the, from the services perspective, it's strictly chiropractic? So my portion of the business is strictly chiropractic. We also have a naturopath in our office who is actually owns the clinic. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of naturopaths. There's a couple of osteopaths and a registered acupuncturist. Awesome. And yeah. so currently, do you rent kind of a room of the space that exactly. you can operate within? Exactly. Yeah. And is yeah. that operating under your own name or is it their name? How does it work? From it's the, contract. So contract. technically it's my own name, um, but my rent, the rent that I'm paying includes reception and all of the supplies that I need. And okay. All so that it's, kind of it's stuff. like a, we work for medical. Yeah. Kind I like of. That. Yeah. Yeah. Is that super common? No, no. More commonly is, um, you are in a space and they take a percentage of your billings. Got it. Um, which is not how I really wanted to go about things. So yeah, I found a different route. Got it. Yeah, I mean, there's always, you know, we talk about that in like, in especially in like hair and different things like that, where um, you get a percentage of your whatever, yeah. and then you pay you pay into it. And I think there's always an inherent alleviation of risk when it's like, oh, I know I'm going to get this fixed amount, so that's great. Right. But then the upside is less. Yes. Right. If you scale, then your money doesn't scale the same way. Exactly. Yeah. And I, when I went into it, I'm the only one out of that I know of out of my friends who graduated with me that is doing it the way I'm doing it. And when I look and I'm like, the scaling opportunity just isn't there. Like yeah. in five years, I'm probably or hopefully going to be in a much better position than taking a percentage of what I bring in. Got it. Got yeah. it. And so did you start the business right after graduating? What's the program? What did you, what do you, so what do you go through? So I have a doctorate of chiropractic. So there's um, only a certain number of professions in Ontario that are allowed to have the title doctor. I am one of them. Awesome. Um, and so it is on top of about, you have to have at least three years of a bachelor's degree to get in. Um, I have a full bachelor's degree because why not? <laughs> and then it's a four year doctorate on top of that. Um, and there's only one school in Canada. So damn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's like the, the, like the top, top percent. I mean, in terms of, of yeah. people that go through that type of program. Yeah. And I mean, the application rate isn't super high. There's not, they're not getting a ton of applicants, but it's about one in, I think the stat that they're saying now is one in six and one in seven who apply get in. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, Cool. And then so you like graduated and you're like, boom, starting. Yeah. Practice. Yeah. I actually had the job lined up and the contract signed well before graduation. Hmm. Um, so we graduated in June. My contract was actually signed in April. Okay. Um, and then there's an eight week waiting period between like when you graduate and when your boards come in and like all this random stuff <laughs> that you have to wait for. So right. it was eight weeks. Right. And what is a board? Is that the, like a certificate that says that you're like, you're good to go. Exactly. Okay. It's a certification exam. Got it. Yeah. And so there's three different portions of it. And so the last one you write literally days before graduation. Um, and then you graduate and then you have to like go through all these steps with your license and your registration and your malpractice insurance and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Cool. And yeah. so to, to take a big step back and we'll come back to this is sure. that, so where, so most people I imagine would be what much more comfortable going into a practice and doing a couple of years there and then kind of slowly gr yeah. graduating. Were you super entrepreneurial before this? Like what, what was your kind of, no, I originally wanted to go into a, into a built practice. I mean, I still would love that, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but it just, I really wanted to stay in Toronto. That was yeah. to me, location was paramount. Got it. And it just like the opportunities that I was seeing, they just weren't there. Everyone was just like, you need to build your own. We'll give you patients when they come in, but it's not, mm -hmm. I'm not handing you a full client roster, patient right. roster. Um, so I was like, you know what, if I'm going to have to build and I had different opportunities and I could have done two part time or one almost full time and one part time and been working more. And I was like, I'm just going to throw all of my eggs into this one entrepreneurial basket and I hope like that. that it 
turns out. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, so good. Two years. Yeah. Two years. That's yeah. I mean, Two that's years. you know, f- they say that three years is that first like major, major hump, and then the five years is like okay, you're set. You're good. And yeah. do you picture yourself? Uh, sorry, and actually keeping just on the backstory before sure. we go forward. Um, were you always into that? Like, what was your, like, interest? What drove you to that program in the first place? Uh, to chiropractic? Yeah. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to be in healthcare. I have a kinesiology degree Got as a background. Um, I didn't want to be a medical doctor. It didn't really interest me. I thought about being a nurse, but then working from, like, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. sounds like the worst thing on the planet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my really good friends um, was applying to chiropractic college the year before me. Mm. And I was like, ooh, that sounds cool. Yeah. And I just happened to, I just applied and I got in. And thank God I got lucky and liked it because it would have been a big investment if I hadn't. <laughs> got it. So the so first year, like, first year, big upfront cost. Uh, the whole thing is a big upfront cost. Right. Um, mm. It's a... It's a private institution, so the entire operating costs of the school comes out of students' tuition. Got it. Um, so, I mean, a blanket figure, tuition alone, for four years, you're looking at 98000 Yeah. Got it. So it's, <laughs> that's a big investment. Yeah. Got yeah. It. So I'm glad I like it. Yes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and so, and so kind of coming back now, so year one... Yeah. Put the name on the door. Yeah. Um, how did you kind of first get off and running with it? How did you first get your, how'd you get your first couple of clients? Um, a lot of them. And still to this day, a lot of my patients are friends of mine, um, which I like because like if your friends can't support you, then who can? Mm-hmm. So I, my first, I want to say my first 10 patients were friends of mine and I still get friends come in the door. Um, and then slowly I would get, I was getting um, referrals from within the clinic and then I joined um, a networking group called Business Networking International. I know it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm now part of that that I get some referrals through. And then once I started to build things up on social media and get, I mean, we say it all the time, consistency is key in everything you do. Mm-hmm. So once I started to get more consistent with that, then things started to flow a little bit better in that sense. Awesome. Yeah. And so so the first couple were kind of word of mouth or friends. Yeah. And then they kind of brought the next person in. Yeah. And then sl- I was getting quite a f- at, I find it comes in waves. So sometimes I'll get a ton. So for like two months, I'll get a bunch of patients from inside the clinic and then I'll go six months without one. It's just like, I don't right. know, it comes in waves and that's fine. Um, so I still do get a lot of friends and still do get a lot of referrals in that sense. And then within the clinic too. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so as you started to grow and obviously had a need for more people to come in the door, yeah. what were the kind of techniques? Like what, how did you go about? Um, so content marketing was a big push that I had. Um, and then I'm now starting to, I was doing boosted posts, which I didn't realize you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought I was doing a really good job at them. And then right. it turns out you're not supposed to do that. Right. And so <laughs> whatever and so now i'm starting to run more actual created ads and targeting properly and that kind of stuff so it's starting that sense is starting to grow so i'm trying to build um trying to push people off of my social media like they're there great push them off onto my website and retarget them that way got it yeah so that's what i'm trying to do and so um how did you learn like where did the concept of content marketing come out for you was it a YouTube thing? Was it part of school? Um, okay, so it was actually not part of school. <laughs> they do a really <laughs> terrible job at teaching us anything about how to run a business. Sure, and I'll tell you, like I, from the medical practitioners that we do marketing for or have done marketing for in the past, yeah, oftentimes like the basic setup that they have is like, oh shit, like you, you might as well be sending out flyers. I it's guess. terrible, yeah, or like yeah. knocking on doors. Like it's right. They. I don't remember a marketing strategy at all in the mm. course that we took. Which is, yeah. Um, they didn't teach us a thing about social media and like nothing. Um, and so the content marketing thing came to me actually a um, classmate of mine, an old classmate of mine, his wife owns a, her name is Kate Matheson. Hey, Kate. Um, she owns a coaching business essentially on how to, how healthcare professionals can build their practices. Awesome. So I ran across her and have done a lot of work with her. And so she's um, kind of guided me in, in the direction of content marketing and where to niche, how to niche, who to talk to, all that kind of stuff. Got it. Yeah. And was she, um, was she an online program or direct coaching? Like she does both. 
I did the online program. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't done direct coaching with her, but she offers it for sure. Got it. And you found that basically whatever you took away from her online program. Yeah. Has got me to this far. (laughs) Um, And then, then I, like I said, I've started to do some Facebook advertising. Um, In the near future, I'm going to call back on her to do a little bit more one-on-one, more um, individualized stuff. Because, I mean, you can only get so much individual help out of an online program. So, yeah. Hmm. That's in the future. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I like we see it so often with particular medical practices with all, all kinds of different businesses that are just really bad at content marketing so and social. Bad. It's like, oh, here's this thing. Oh, by the way, you got to buy something from me. It's like, no, yeah. you already lost. Yeah, you already you're failed. Done. You're Thanks done. for coming out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, been following, obviously following along with that stuff. It, it, wherever you got it from, yeah, it, it obviously provided from a marketing agency. I'm telling you that you got great advice from her. So thanks. <laughs> yes, that's cool. And so, um, what's your kind of goal with social? Is it, um, to, is it, to, I guess that let's actually go, let's talk about the goal of the business first. And that sure. kind of, that will kind of, I think go like, where are you looking to create this as like, I'm creating a lifestyle brand for myself. Are you trying to get your own clinic? Are you looking to have practitioners under you? Like, what are you kind of working? Yeah. With? So, I mean, um, we're in one of those really old three-story buildings on Young Street that are probably not going to be there in 10 years. Yeah. So I've now started to kind of really think of, okay, I, I need to, at some point, either stay with the naturopath, um, and depending on where he goes once our building has been said that we can't be there anymore, or go out on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm expecting that I'll want to go out on my own because I treat a lot of the LGBTQ community. I'm in the village. Sure. Um, and that's where I want to be. That's who I want to be treating. And so staying in the village is really important to me. Got it. Um, so at some point I would like to go out on my own, have massage therapists and naturopaths in the clinic with me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would eventually like to own my own at some point. Who knows when that will be. (laughs) And would you, do you picture that like the way that you're involved in the company now that yeah. you're involved with like that, so you'd kind of set up that similar kind of co-op idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that the, I like the autonomy that it's given me. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that it's, um, I mean, from an owner's perspective, it's like a set amount that you're bringing in. So yeah. like it's a little bit more security than it could be. Um, so I think that, um, yeah, I like the structure that I'm in right now. I think it's mutually beneficial. So yeah. I would keep it similar. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then, um, would and I don't know enough about practicing medicine. Yeah. So, is there other things within the Cairo space that you would do or advanced things? Or are you kind of like you you know what to do now in terms of like you know what I mean? Like, are there other products or services yeah, that come totally. with what you're doing? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a bunch of different like assessment techniques that you can pull from. Um, there's a lot of different courses out there, like continuing education courses, which we have to take. I mean, there's a ton of different stuff you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a pregnancy course, there's uh, stuff for specific around children, there's stuff specific around athletes and, I mean, CrossFitters is a big kind of thing. So there's a whole like functional assessment kind of thing. I also do acupuncture. Got it. Okay. So yeah. 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 That's... Um, so I do acupuncture as well. There's different muscle techniques, like muscle treatment techniques that you can be certified in. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of different avenues that you can go and you can focus in any one or more of those. Got it. Yeah. And do you see, your, do you see yourself expanding into those or just kind of staying drilled down or? Yeah. I, at some point I would like to expand in them. Um, I mean, to be really honest with you, money is the big factor that some of these courses are like $900 right. for a weekend, which is a ton of money. Like, yeah. Yes, you can write it off, but you still have to pay it up front, yeah. like, which a lot of people I find don't realize like, oh, I can write it off, but like, it still has to go on the credit card at some point. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. not like this magical little thing. Um, so yeah, at some point I would love to do that. Um, I just need to like forge out and budget for it all. And mm. so, um, yeah, there's some functional range stuff that is really good. And it's a lot of movement based stuff, which I find people want. Cool. Yeah. And so then talking about the social media side, yeah. like is your, I mean, obviously it's a lead generation. You're, you're, you're approaching it from a lead generation yeah. standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, 
do you have an aspiration to build a big following and become an authority in the space? Or is it more so I can develop, I can deliver this type of great content that will make people come see me? Like, how are you thinking about it long term? Um, right now, I'm thinking about it as let me deliver this really good content to the immediate audience that I have mm-hmm. um, while and hopefully drawing them in while slowly trying to build that outside audience. Um, I'm working on a couple of projects, actually one big project right now that I'm not ready to talk about, but (laughs) (laughs) that will hopefully put me in even into a wider audience of people. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now I'm trying to focus on delivering like quality stuff to the people who've been around for my short journey that I've had so far. Yeah. And, And I know a lot of the stuff that you do, you have a big focus around getting comfortable and keeping yourself healthy while you're at work yes. because it's obviously a big problem huge i've i've met with a, a a guy who has a personal training business and another gym up called primal mma yeah who i've known for a long time and worked done some work with them and every person i speak to in this type of space that could talk about it i always harp on like tell people how to do what you would do but at work yeah because they're stuck there yeah and it's uncomfortable and it's unhealthy yeah i mean there's all these i don't pay attention to them that much but there's all these statistics on sitting all day and how right. bad it is and all that yeah stuff. and and i really like the angle that you take Thank with you. it because i think it's so practical and it's the content marketing piece it's like deliver something they can do at work because then when they're feeling achy at home they're like oh yeah remember that guy yeah remember that guy who told me how to do that thing and it made me feel better yeah right yeah it's like an instant in when they're ready to do business exactly and the stuff that i'm teaching around the whole workplace thing is like super simple like it's just so easy and i ask my patients all the time i'm like how are you like are you doing these stretches at your desk and how are you feeling do you feel a little bit more energy when you um are sitting at your desk and you've done them and they're like yeah it actually works yeah um, so like simple movements, things like getting up and walking around every 45 minutes, which like you don't have to go far, right? Like a walk around the block or like a walk around your office is yeah. all you need. Um, but we're s- sitting at work for like eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. You need to be comfortable where you are. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And so. have you, have you thought about using Instagram slash Facebook slash YouTube ads, any of the above to target people that are sitting in an office and kind of delivering that content via an ad? Yeah, I have an ad. I have an audience set up for that. I have yeah. not targeted it yet, but it's in the works. Got it. Yeah. Um, and I think it'll I think it'll get me places. I just need to position it the way I want to. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I don't like to put anything out until it's perfect. Got it. So that's something that I'm also <laughs> working on because it will I can always say it's not perfect. Right. So yeah. I know the I know the pain and yeah. and the and the other challenge is like when it's your business it's your baby yeah, and you're exactly. and I I do we do recordings all the time where we like try and make fifteen different versions to target different people like hey this profession hey that profession yeah right and uh, I've what I do now is I just don't watch it after I record it right and I just put it out I don't watch any of the, the videos best. I make yeah I don't watch I've never watched a podcast no. of mine. I've never <laughs> ever watched a video I make and my partner drives me crazy because he'll uh, put on he'll like be scrolling through and he'll see one of my stuff and he puts it on the loudest volume possible and (laughs) makes me listen to it. And I hate it so much (laughs) because I never watch anything back ever. (laughs) As long as I say what I want to say and don't sound like a bumbling idiot, then I go, then I put it up. I don't care. Yeah. Because if I watch it back, it'll just, I'll be there for two hours trying to film a 30 second clip. Like it just won't work for sure. So, and so maybe, maybe if it helps, I'd love to dive in a little bit to, how you're from the Facebook ad perspective, sure. how you're thinking about targeting. I can probably be of yeah. some value there. Sure. Um, so are you, I'm imagining you're doing it with a ge- geographic field of yes. a mile or two miles? I actually miles? do it um, based off of postal code. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because really I still find that um, because I'm in downtown and it's, there's so densely populated Mm -hmm. there's so many chiropractors people want to be within a certain walking distance or transit distance of you yeah so i have actually got it down to a uh, postal the postal codes that i target perfect and they're always the same postal codes got it that's great yeah Yeah. one one technique that we use when you're like i gotta get it a bit wider than postal but it's too many postals to tackle is we'll do like a one mile radius and you drop the map pin on that one spot okay and then you get a whole bunch of other map pins and you almost like do a venn diagram all the way around it but all the outskirts you exclude 
Oh, so you okay. include the main one, and then you put a bubble here, and then you say exclude this area. Exclude, exclude, okay. exclude, exclude. So it actually narrows that one mile into a bit of a tighter. Because okay, with Facebook ads, a one mile radius is the tightest you can get. Right. But sometimes yeah. that's not good enough. Yeah. And so we'll do sometimes if we're like if we're if we have a booth at an event or a client has a booth at an event, right. we want people to come interact. We'll record a video being like, "Hey, are you at this event? Da 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 da. Come see us." But when you put it on the venue. It gets one mile. Right. So we'll block everything kind of okay. around it. So it's like, it's a good chance you're in that spot. Right. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Cool. And so when you drop the pin, you just change the, there's a drop down for distance. Yeah. And there's a drop down for include or exclude. Right. You can layer that and tighten okay. it up a little bit more. Cool. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then, so from there, what what other things do you consider? Do you drop um, titles or? Yeah, I do a lot of like the... I don't even know what they're called, but it's like mm. the behaviors, like the yep. interests, employment, hobby, like I go through all of those. Yep. Um, so the, I mean, the audience that's doing the best right now for me is um, I've combined um, an LGBTQ um, kind of audience. And the, the way I did that was I targeted the people in the village and then I wrote in the interest of RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. So, yep. <laughs> and yep. then, and then inc I've included that into like a wellness. So I've included like CrossFit and alternative medicine and like good life fitness is one that you can put in. So yep. I've done that kind of stuff too. Um, and I have one al in the works that has the, no ad push to it, but it has like accounting and like it has like CIBC I think as an employer and mm -hmm. stuff like that because they're the ones that are sitting at their desks all the time got it yeah so one piece of advice that really really helps people and you have to run a certain amount of traffic for it to work right but it's the to me it's the complete unlock to Facebook being your best friend in the right. entire world is you are you and you're running video or you're running image both okay yeah so specific to video, mm -hmm. my recommendation is, and how long is the video? 30 seconds yeah, a minute? Yeah, 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So my recommendation is if you can get something that's 40 seconds to a minute. Okay. 30 seconds is pretty good. Yeah. 15 to 20 is a bit light for this technique. Okay. So 30 seconds is fine. What you do is you run that ad to different people. Right. And there's going to be a certain amount of people that either click and go to the website. Yeah. Or like it or comment or right. do whatever they're going to do. Um, and then there's going to be certain people that if it's cohesive enough are going to watch more or less. Mm -hmm. So the key, and we use this for a bunch of hip hop artists when we're launching like new music videos and mm -hmm. stuff is we'll put the video out to a bit of a broader audience. Mm -hmm. So the pool, like when you're in Facebook, the audience will be like between 300 and 500,000, right. pretty wide. Yeah. Sometimes more. And we'll run that for like a week. Mm hmm. And then what we do is um, when you're in the ad manager, you can go into audiences and create custom audiences. Okay. So yeah. um, same like that drop down and then there's audiences. Yeah. So you create an audience that has, so of, I think if you go into, when you go custom audience, I think it's like one of them is like video. Yeah. Click on video, pick the video that you've promoted. Mm -hmm. And then you want to build a library of people that have watched 75% or more okay. of your video of okay. that particular right. video. Okay. So that's, and so that is a great way, especially if you're going to add another layer of messaging. Mm -hmm. So say you've got a pool of, I like to start at 750. Okay. If, if you have that amount in that pool, that's right. a great number okay. to work from. So you can do two things with that. You can then send a like, Hey, take advantage of this thing. And it could be an image ad or whatever right. that goes only to the people that watch seventy five percent because that's I sat there and watched twenty two seconds. Right, I'm I had, had to be sitting there. Yeah, so I remarket to them with an offer because you can be a bit more aggressive because they've obviously shown some intent. Mm -hmm. So that's one part, and then the other part is you can create an audience that of look alike. Right, have you heard of this? Yes. Yeah. And so you say I, I have a pool of seven hundred fifty to a thousand or more people that have watched more than seventy five percent. Go find me people like that are the that. most like them, 1%. Okay. So when you go to look alike, you pick that audience right. and you say 1% because that's like the closest. The narrowest you can be. So then you use that as your targeting. And the only thing that you use is a geographic block, mm -hmm. which will be a bit wider than you're used to because um, when you pick your look alike, it's across a country. Okay. So it's going to open it up to Canada, but in all likelihood, because it's people locally that are interacting, it's going to find those people locally. Anyway. Okay. So then I would use a one mile radius pin of the, of the clinic. Yeah. So the only targeting you use is look alike audience 1%. Yeah. 
one mile radius that's it okay and start running the same ad whatever the ad is done well whichever is done well for you Mm -hmm. run that ad to that audience okay and then that audience just gets smarter and smarter and and smarter and smarter and it takes some of the guessing and some of the tweaking of the audience out okay we found that to be so we've we brought um, like if we run, if we're running it as an engagement ad, we have brought engagement from like eight cents to one cent wow. for traffic. We've brought like, like 57 cents to 20 cents. Mm-hmm. Crazy, mm-hmm. crazy different. Mm-hmm. Um, and just Facebook has this uncanny ability to find people based on the pool. That's so great. And as long as the base audience is 750 or more, the lookalike will be more effective right away. Okay. If it's like 100 and then look alike, it's not going to be it as defined. Really yeah. If you have more, if it's a couple thousand, it's going to be tighter Even and tighter better. and tighter and tighter. Okay. So that's one thing. That's great. Um, if your video has a call to action and pushes to a website, yeah. it's like, hey, click here and go to this landing page. Yeah. Collecting the audience who have gone to that landing page. And if you, again, once you have more than 700, yeah. you create a look like of those, that'll be even better than watched video view. Yeah. So that's where I push people. I have been in the past couple of months, been in all ad, or most ads, been pushing people to a blog post that I've written. Yes. So okay. I can at least, they're, they're at least like clicking on the ad and going to the blog post, whether or not they're reading it, I don't know. But yeah. at least they're clicking on it. So I at least yeah. have that. Yeah, that data. And so. so from the blog post idea, what I would do is um, create an audience. Uh, so top 75% yeah. who visited that landing page. Okay. So when you go to website traffic, you've got the Facebook pixel on your yep. website. Yep. And so you say, website. I want to make an audience of website traffic. Yeah. This URL. Okay. Yeah. And then the top 75%. Okay. So it's the people that have spent the most amount of time. Oh, okay. And I think you can actually do I didn't it. Know you could go that. I deep think with you that. used to be able to do it. Like has spent at least thirty seconds or more. Right. I don't know if they took that out. Okay. But they used to be able to do it based on like this page and time spent, or I went to this page and that page, and then right. you you can get down a rabbit hole. You can right. create a million pieces of content based on. I only want people who spent more than thirty seconds who went to this blog post and then our contact page. Right. And then it's an aggressive offer, and then the contact and about is more of like a, hey, I'm Donald, or a testimonial video. Right. So you can get down a really deep hole with that. Okay. But I think from keeping it relatively simple yeah. to remarket with an offer to your best performing. Okay. People that watch more than 75%, people that look like them, or people that have gone to a certain page on your website right. and spent a meaningful amount of time, right. those people are ready to be like, hey, come see me. Right. And I would think about from the remarketing standpoint, maybe doing, if you have some video testimonial, yeah, running that. And the t- it, it's just like a, see what this guy said right. about our practice. Right. Cause then it's like, oh, now I've got the social proof mm-hmm. on top of the fact that I was already interested. Yeah. And that will bring them, yeah. that'll help close the sales gap. Okay. Yeah. The uh, video testimony is a good idea. I have like written testimon- testimonials where I literally just like copy and paste the Google reviews, which is fine. Yep. Uh, but I don't have any video testimonials. Yeah. So that's a good one I recommendation like that. that's easier to do, and especially for your longtime people, is yeah. to get one of these, these Big light the LED lights. rings yeah. that you put your phone in. Yeah. And then, like, literally, as they're there in your space. Right. Actually, um, Meticulous Smile, a dentist that we do some yeah. work with, she has this set up in her space. Amazing. And she gets like two video testimonials a week. Wow. And they're fantastic because yeah. they like her and they're personable with her. Right. Not everyone's comfortable. But if you say like, if you wait for them to go home, you wait for them to whatever. Yeah. And then you try and, oh, can you just record something on your phone and send it? No one will ever do it. It's not gonna, and it's, it's not going to look good. It's so hard. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard. But yeah, if you've got that in the space, be like, hey, you know, we've yeah. been seeing each other for a long time. No pressure. Yeah. But if you wouldn't mind, could you record 20 seconds? Yeah. On what- I want to get a tripod anyway, so that's a good... I don't have a tripod right now, so that's a good... There you go. Yeah. You don't have a tripod when you record as much as you do? <laughs> so I... <laughs> <laughs> so there in my window, I have yeah. really great light in my office, which mm-hmm. is nice. Um, but in my window, I have a like an old like juice bottle with mm-hmm. a pride flag sticking in it. And I've been able to like jimmy my phone up. So it's like leaning against the, the pride stick flag. of the pride flag. Right. And I just do my videos sitting in my <laughs> facing a window in my office. It works. It works. Yeah. You None don't... of them are over a minute long anyway right now. So right. it, I, it 
stays up for a minute, it wouldn't stay up for much longer than that. Sure. <laughs> and how do you, just for other people that are thinking about, I want to start doing what you're doing. Yeah. Go follow. We'll link to your, your pages and stuff like that. Sure. But do you, from just the technical standpoint, are you recording it just on the, the standard video on your phone? Or are you recording yeah. it right in Instagram? How I'm recording it onto my phone um, because I actually don't post from Instagram at all. I use a scheduler. Got it. Yep. Um, because I wasn't using a scheduler and then now I do. Mm-hmm. And when I wasn't, I was finding that like to sit down every day and film something or to mm-hmm. pick an image and then write the copy, like it was taking way longer than it should have. Yeah. And so now I'm finding that if I do a week at a time, I can actually get it done in the same amount of time that it was taking me to do one post. Good. Uh, that's, that's, I love that you went there because yeah. that's a huge push that I always put on people. Yeah. It's like, if you try and do it every day, no. it's over. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So how much content do you shoot in what period of time? Do you sit down for two hours and shoot a week? Um, so you... I generally, I try to do three images and two videos a week. Okay. Um, just because I like to switch it up. Yeah. And I don't, I have this weird thing where I don't like to be wearing the same shirt in two consecutive videos Got or it. in two consecutive posts. Yep. I, that's just me. Yep. It's just this weird thing I have. Mm. So I, um, I will schedule all three, um, I'll schedule all three photos and the first video. Mm-hmm. And then on the day that I've decided that I'm going to do the second video, I will do it that day. But I already have the copy written and I know what I'm going to say. So it's mm-hmm. literally just me for however many times it tried to take, it yeah. takes take. Um, so I do one video a week kind of on the fly. The mm-hmm. rest of it is all scheduled. Perfect. Yeah. And what do you use to schedule a program? I use Later. Later. I yeah. Good things. Yeah. Um, I was using Hootsuite. Um, and I just didn't shitty like for it. Instagram. Yeah, I it's just kind of got a clunky interface. Yeah, too. I didn't like yeah. it. I didn't like the app. Sorry, just, Hootsuite. I'm, sorry, I'm not. Hootsuite. I'm not sorry. <laughs> um, and then I looked at later. Um, the one thing with later is that um, you do have to pay to put to schedule a video. Yeah, um, I think it's nine dollars a month, which is whatever. Yeah. Um, but I really like it. It the app is amazing. Really? Yeah. So like it's web based on your computer and then there's an app for your phone, which I love because it connects very well. And so, um, I don't actually have to download anything onto my computer or like email anything to myself or whatever, put it on a Google drive. I can put, I can like shoot the video on my phone. I have an app that squares it all off for Instagram and then I can just upload it from my phone directly into the app and Mm -hmm. it magically appears in the dashboard on my computer. Love it. And that's, so is that, that's stories and, or is it just, posts? I do all of my stories kind of on the fly and Got just it. talk about whatever I want. Got it. <laughs> or like post my morning coffee or like whatever it is. So Got it. I do my stories on the fly because I think that the stories are more authentic and more kind of on the fly platform. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if you even can schedule the stories on there. I never do. I, so. I hear that there's some, so it's weird actually because a lot of programs, when you like look at their web page, you're like, oh, and you can you can do your Instagram posts, and then you're like, no, you send me an alert to my phone saying go post on Instagram. Yeah, now. that's what a lot of them. do. That's what Hootsuite was doing, right? And so we got Agora Pulse because okay. we use it for a bunch of different profiles, yeah. and it's been great. But I don't think it does. I don't think it schedules the stories. I don't actually use it, but yeah, uh, Jenny does, and uh, she likes it. But yeah, the s- I've never stories. tried to I think schedule stories. I've never yeah. like. Had the need. Had the need to. Those are the ones that I just kind of do off the cuff and I yeah. don't really care how they turn out. And I yeah. think people actually kind of like when they turn out kind of stupid and goofy. Right. So I don't really care about those and they're gone in 24 hours. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. So I don't schedule those. And so later is a $9 a month. Yeah. You, there is a free version, but if you're ever doing video, it doesn't let you do anything on video for free. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's only photographs for free. Um, so... I went ahead and I, because I do so much video and because like a lot of for chiropractic and like any really health profession, like Mm -hmm. the content is so much easier to absorb in, in video, like with exercises and like I do some video of like me actually adjusting patients and like it just, it's, it's a lot easier to explain things on video I find. So Mm -hmm. to me it was worth the $10 a month. Fair enough. To do that. And this is actually a hot topic for people in your type of industry. Mm -hmm how are you monitoring or determining what lead or what new patient comes from where? So on, we have an online scheduler called Jane. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've heard of it. Okay. So it's like the best, I think is the best one in 
in the biz, the best EMR in the biz. Um, and so it has a drop down that's required that we've made it be required on how did you hear about us? Okay. And since the clinic itself that I'm with, Liberty Clinic, does no advertising at all, mm. um, I know that anything that says online ad is become comes from me. Sure. So I don't necessarily like care which online ad it's coming from, and yep. because I don't do Google or as like I don't do Google ads at all right now. Yep. So it, if it's an online ad, I know it's coming from Facebook. Sure. Um, and I don't really care like which blog post they're reading. That doesn't matter to me. Sure. <laughs> so. and is the website that you have part of theirs and you've got a profile on it? Or do you have your, yeah. oh, yeah. so you don't have an independent no. site? No, ah. no. Okay. Um, yeah, it's included in my, my overhead. Got it. Yeah. And so you have an, a, like a little area where you publish your whatever content, your own. Pro- yeah. So my uh, professional Facebook or Facebook and Instagram are my own. I okay. run all of it. The clinic has a Facebook page, but I think the last update was 2015. Um, <laughs> and they, he, the clinic itself just doesn't need to do anything. He's one of the top rated naturopaths in Toronto. He com- ranks number two on Google, I think, or right. so he just doesn't need to. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So okay. I do all of my own stuff. So, and, and so the Facebook page, pixel that you're using yeah are you basically the only one that puts you just put the pixel on the site and i put the pixel on my own website actually i have my own website as well oh, okay sorry that's yeah. what i was asking yeah okay yeah so i have my own website as well that i drive all the traffic to i drive no traffic to the liberty clinic website right um i drive it just all from to my own website okay. and that was done as a conscious decision in case um things at liberty clinic didn't work out sure. i'm glad they do but I'm also glad I have my own website too. Yeah, so, and I mean yeah. just just building the brand, your email list, whatever the thing is you decide to do. Yeah, it's important to have it on your own property. Even yeah. like even with the Facebook Pixel, the the detriment of not having access to that would be yeah tremendously huge. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, okay. So you've got it. On your I website. have my own everything. I work out of Liberty Clinic, but I have like my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and the website. my website are all my own. Got it. Yeah. And then, but, and can you book right from the web, your website or you go, you push them there to book? Uh, I push them to the, our uh, electronic health record. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like a simple, um, I have access to like most of the electronic health record. So just on the website is a simple book now button and it yeah. goes straight onto the record. Got it. Um, there's no like middleman, it just goes straight on through. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. takes away a suggestion I had, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. I think I think one thing to think about going like in the future is is when you have your own booking system on yours, mm-hmm. um, especially as you're playing around with different ideas and different mediums and whatever. Um, we've used a program in the past for clients called CallRail okay. that allows you to set a dynamic phone number. Okay. based on where the traffic came from okay and whether they fill out a form or they physically call that number is embedded in the site if it's a, a facebook ad or a facebook organic or an instagram or instagram story okay. whatever the thing is mm-hmm. it triggers the whole website to say hey by the way the traffic came from here okay. and then if they fill out a form or do they do anything and it triggers in google analytics right. for example or even in call rail it'll say oh you got a call from Facebook ads or oh, Instagram okay. stories or whatever different right. thing. Um, right now it wouldn't be useful for you. Right. But um, yeah. something to think about down there. Yeah, for sure. I've never mm-hmm. heard of that. So Yeah. It's uh, I think they're out of Dallas. Oh, okay. Really nice group. Really affordable for what they do. Oh. I was like really impressed. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I was like really impressed. I was like 20 bucks a month for real? I love that. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. Sign me up. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything I can help you with from a marketing standpoint? Do you have any kind of questions? Anything you're toying with? Um... I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm toying with a lot. I'm just, there's a lot of things that I'm not like ready to talk about. Sure. (laughs) Very early stages of things, but I'm really excited about them. Awesome. Um, But yeah, I just, anything that you have is probably more than I'm doing right now. So (laughs) (laughs) one other thing that I think would be helpful if, and especially if it's like at your desk exercises or yeah. whatever if you're running ads for that anyway yeah i would think about running those on youtube okay as well yeah um you can you can't do the same behavioral and demographic targeting that you can with facebook and instagram okay. that's the superpower of it right um but one thing you can do is you can target it by search on google right so we use it for a lot of different stuff right now okay. if i don't want to pay for a google ad mm-hmm. from like whatever so say i've got a blog article that talks about exercises that you can do at work right i don't want to pay three bucks to right. google 
to buy that click. Right. It's just not that practical. Right. And we have some clients that, you know, the average click for their industry is like $38. So we're like, okay, let's not do that. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, compared to you guys, you'd be like three to six. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And um, But what you can do on YouTube, and we do it for our podcast. So what we'll do is people looking for marketing ideas for chiropractor clinic or yeah. marketing ideas for a hip-hop artist. When they search that on Google, yeah. nothing happens. Right. But the next thing they go on YouTube, uh, that video shows up for them. Okay. So people could be searching for... And you can say like, hey, here's my postal codes, the same way you do with Facebook right. and Instagram. And people could be at their office actually searching for exercises at my desk. Right. My back is sore from sitting all day at my desk. Right. Those things. And then the next time they go on YouTube, your video could show up there. Okay, interesting. And I've never really, I always thought that YouTube, I mean, most of my videos are quite short. So I always just thought that YouTube had to be like longer form videos. Mm. So it's never really cross my mind no to, to the shorter them, videos are conducive to getting people to go somewhere else okay hey do you want more do you want the full do you want the big the big video go to the website right i do it i kind of cheat it mine are weird so my pod my youtube ads are an hour long okay this full episode will be a youtube ad oh, pre-roll okay. pre youtube ad okay so like i want to go to watch a video and then the ad comes up and it's an hour long and you're like what the hell is this right a little counterintuitive but it's working for me okay my average watch time on my ads right now is over 19 minutes wow because i'm targeting it so specifically so specific and so i think it doesn't matter how long they are it, if okay. it's like hey i've made four or five other videos here's my library of right. keeping you active at your desk and that's on a website okay. yeah you could run those short ads people right. search on google your video comes up hey you could record an outro right hey do you want to get more tips about staying healthy at your desk then that pulls them to the website okay that gets the click okay and you can run those for like two to five cents per view okay even based on the search parameter yeah. which okay. is cheap Good. it's cheaper than facebook and instagram yeah yeah right now my my current ad for it's a video ad pushing to a blog is running i think it's 16 cents per landing page view. Which well, is, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. So, and I wasn't running any video ads um, up until very recently, mm. and I was running just um, f photo. Mm. Um, and the, I, everyone was like, run video ads. They do so much better. Run mm. video ads do so much better. But like, I didn't believe them because my organic engagement, there's no difference. Right. It's pretty similar across the board. Right. Um, and so I didn't believe them, and mm. the video ads do way better. <laughs> yeah. Well, Instagram's starting to take a complete nosedive from the organic reach perspective. Yeah. Like, it's starting to go what to what Facebook started doing years yeah. ago, and it's, like, painful for a lot of people. Yeah. Like, we work with we work with artists who just, like, we just exploded from, like, 75,000 to, like, a quarter million followers. Yeah. And the organic reach is so low, it's the same amount that they were getting at 75. Before. Yeah, it's all and so paid I'm, now. like, for me, my only game right now with people is... Get them the hell off your social. Yeah. Put them on an email list. Yeah. Get them to the website. Do something to get them away. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've been in the past couple of months. That's what I've been doing because you're not the only person who's told me, like, get them off social. Yeah. It's a borrowed platform. Yep. So. And what you could do with those is, hey, do you want to subscribe to my weekly yeah. thing? Yeah. And then have a unique video that goes out. And it can be the same as on Instagram and Facebook. It doesn't matter. Right. And have that email go out. Like, put them on an email list. Right. Hey, yeah. here's your Monday stretch tip. Yeah. Whatever that thing is. But then at least you've got them through calm. Like, through a, com a, com a, com a comedian. My brain is melting. <laughs> through a communications method that you own. You yes. own that relationship. Yes. You own that yeah. conversation and i think once you have that you can then every once in a while be like hey by the way next week i've got a couple openings right not on every not on every email right but every once in a while hey you know i've started offering this or whatever yeah if you if you ask for something one in every six to yeah. ten emails then it's an acceptable margin right. well it's also good i just like i thought of this as you were talking like a good idea to be like what kind of stretch do you want to see next week and you could like yeah. easily get like, they, they can respond to your email yeah. and then you can go and record it yeah right set yeah. up the tripod and then right yeah. yeah no that's a good idea i like that mm. um yeah and I, one thing that I also did in the past couple of months was pay a professional photographer, Nice. which was something that I was very hesitant to do because mm. I think that my photo taking skills are very good, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was well worth it. And yeah. I recommend that to anybody too, is 
pay for a professional photographer. Yeah. One of the things I'm toying with, one of the girls that we use for photography, we, we came up with this, this like lifestyle photo shoot mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. So we did it the other day. Um, no, it was like a month and a half ago. <laughs> All the days blend together. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. I was in Mexico for a month, and my brain was like, I came back, and I was like, cool, it's June. I'm like, no, June's gone. Man. Yeah, it's like, July. You were gone. Yeah. And now time didn't stop, so yeah. welcome back. <laughs> anyway, so it was before we left. But we spent like three hours just like walking around and yeah. getting different, like, hey, go like super far ahead and take like. Yeah. And so we were, you know, we're getting. 30, 40, 50 awesome pictures yeah. in like really different settings. And it's like, perfect. I have yeah. so much Instagram content now. The, the guy that I hired, Omar, thanks. Um, he did, it was just in my office and it was mm. a two hour thing. He, there's a couple of like staged headshots, which I wanted. Yeah. Um, and then a bunch of it is just me treating patients. Awesome. So yeah. I had a couple of, I had a friend and my receptionist. Mm -hmm. um, they were my patients and he, I have 145 photos. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Just to work through and yeah, there's so many people that are so precious. Wow. Well, you're going to get 10 shots. Like I don't want 10 no. shots. And like, that, yeah. Just send me the unedited ones. I'll figure it out. Yeah. It's fine. Just yeah. like, let's go content, content. Yeah. Content. So I have 145. Perfect. Yeah. Which is, which is, which is like a year and a half to two years worth of Instagram content Yeah, because you can only use them so often. Right? Yeah. So. And because I'm mixing in video yeah. and I'll, st I still, ch I try and mix in like a non-professional photo, like of, I don't know, something that I did on the weekend or like whatever sure. it is. Yep. Um, I don't know, for some reason, the Toronto sky, like photos that I take of the Toronto skyline seem to always pop up, but mm. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And from the instagram strategic standpoint i'm always curious about this because everyone has kind of a different opinion or a different based on their audience they get a different response out of it mm -hmm. what is the best content that you put out like what do you get the best response what do you get the best engagement on the best the stuff that i get the best engagement on is um stuff that is less about my practice and more about like showcasing my personality mm -hmm. Um, and that's something that I'm trying really hard to like mix into the actual content of my copy, um, and like actually trying to make my personality shine through because that's what is getting the engagement. And I think that's so important. People yeah. are too nervous to like come off, especially in my world where we, we are doctors, we're considered this like author naturally considered this authority figure because yep. of the DR in front of our name. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't want to be, we were told that like, you can't be silly. Like you don't want to look like a goof, but like, mm. who cares? People want to see that. Like, yeah. so I'm trying to break down that wall of like showing my personality. Cause that's the stuff that's really shining through. So yeah. Yeah. And anything, I mean, because I market to the LGBTQ community and because I am part of the LGBTQ community, anything with a rainbow, <laughs> <laughs> which is so basic, but <laughs> It works, Functional. whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't looked on your profile, but do you um, do you use the videos, the stretching videos? Where do you use those stories? Uh, mostly posts. on the profile as actual posts, as feed posts. Got it. Yeah. And do you have stuff that's over a minute that you put into Instagram TV? Do I you haven't use it? yet. No, I don't. Instagram TV is wicked right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting to like, I'm actually building out kind of an entire strategy around Okay. how do I cut things like this mm -hmm. where is the seven minute point Sweet spot yeah cut it out where's the five minute the four minute the anything longer than an instagram post right um and then formatting it and making it look good for instagram tv for so, they want people to use it okay and so some of the clients that we've been using it for um we're seeing and you're seeing it more and more if you go into discovery yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. You're yeah. seeing more and more of the little little squiggle TV guy, right? Yeah. Like it's a ton of them are posts. Now it's even you're seeing um, uh, stories mm -hmm. becoming part of discovery. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of Instagram TV in okay. discovery. And so I think throw like loading up a couple of hashtags into that. Yeah. And setting it up, especially for them, like longer form, practical how to. Right. Like, is the, like the stuff you put on stories where it's like you talking and th that's yeah. not a good fit. For no. It. And I, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I didn't mean to that, but I find, I find the, so I'm very, because I, I have niched into kind of two separate markets. Um, I'm pretty picky about what I actually post on my feeds okay. in terms yeah. of like, I want it to fall either 
under the LGBTQ rainbow or either under neck pain, posture, or headaches. Like that's where I want my stuff to fall. Yeah, that's. And I find that I can put whatever the heck I want on the stories. Yes. So that's where I have a little bit more fun. Or like if a patient asks me a question about low back pain, that's I answer those on the stories because Mm -hmm. I find that I don't really want this that kind of stuff on my. Yeah. Not that I won't treat low back pain, but I prefer a neck. Like it's just that's me. Got it. So. And I think I think keeping that content more authentic to like the core of what you want and who you are is actually the best way to do it. One thing that we do as part of like the social media training that we offer to people is saying like, Hey, what are the three categories? Yeah. And then every post is something in that category. Yeah. It can have nuance, but like it's got to fall. If it doesn't fall, then it's not for your posts. Yeah. So it's good that you've already kind of gone. Yeah. So I do that. Was that part of the the program? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. So she did well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check her out. Yeah. 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 She's great. great. Yeah. I mean, she lives in China right now, but she's still wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) Um. But yeah. So then I use the stories, and I could use the IGTV. I have been hesitant to use IGTV because honestly, I've never even watched one, so I don't really even know what. Yeah. They consist of. Yep. So, um, yeah, I've never done one. I've never, yeah. but I will. I'll yeah. look into it. <laughs> I would, yeah. And I mean, for me, I don't have a priority one over another. Right. I just determine what performs better, what gets the best reach. Right. And then I'm like, okay, I'll figure that Let's out. Let's do then. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm impartial to where it comes from. Okay. Uh, and where where it's going. If it's going to be, if it's going to get you better reach, right. it's going to get you 50 more impressions, 100 more impressions, and that. Right. Sure. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, you can't run any ads to Instagram TV yet. I'm sure you'll be able to soon. Yeah. With Instagram, <laughs> it's a little bit more limited. It's like one minute is the max for an video ad. length for yeah. the ad. Yeah. Um, but we've been trying like two, like 30 second story ads. Okay. So it's like, it, it goes from like the same way you'd have a 15 second blip, then it goes to the next. Right. You can actually just have it continuous as oh, an okay. ad. Okay. Up to a minute. Okay. Up to four blips. Oh, okay. So we haven't done it yet, but we're working on, we, we're going to launch um, a content calendar mm-hmm. that's like a all year, hundred like 250 ideas for the year. Okay. Of posts. Right. And I'm going to try that on stories coming up. Yeah. Because I think there's an interesting place with like a video of like, hey, you struggling with creating content and social media? Yeah. And the thing I'm finding with stories this. is that like, I mean, I'm sometimes guilty of this too, is that like sometimes I go there before I even start to scroll my feed. Yeah. So I think it's something that I'm starting to now resist the resistance, I guess. Like I'm starting now to become okay with it. Yeah. And I think part of that was because my Instagram was very late in the fact that like, so, you know, when you record a story, it'll like automatically split it up into 15 seconds. Now it does. Yeah. I just got that last week. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was recording videos <laughs> was like using, six months ago. using a cut story app to yeah. then post everything individually. Yeah, so I was like, before. this is a pain in the ass. Yeah. So I literally got it last week that I can record a full, like, however just, long. And, and that was just Instagram updating these, late on your I, phone. Right? I guess so. Yeah. What do you have? An Apple or an Android? Yeah, I have an, I have an iPhone. iPhone? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, usually. Updated to like the most, most updated up stuff so i don't and everybody else i knew had it and i was like this is so do annoying. you have the thing now where it doesn't show you how many likes on the posts yes other people's posts yeah mm. that came at the same time for me yeah yeah so before i think part of the reason why i wasn't posting any stories was because it was just so labor intensive i'd have yeah. to record it and yeah, then the cut story was post like we we, we, de- we deleted cut story seven months ago yeah. that's really late that's really, really late, late. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was so annoyed <laughs> <laughs> yeah so now i've come around to it a little bit just like i mean it's user experience right yeah. like it's easier now to do it yeah so instagram's yeah. really good at blowing up other people's products that they're trying to monetize like oh cool this product just started doing this and instagram's like no no we're just going to include that in now you yeah don't, we don't you don't need it anymore yeah like there's so many apps that we used to use and i look at the old toolbox from our old training course and i'm mm-hmm. like there's like five things in here that are completely obsolete yeah that don't instagram even exist just anymore. like they just yeah. figured it out yeah so they did a good job yeah, Instagram is very innovative that way. Yeah, Facebook story still sucks. It does, yet they still notify me every time somebody posts a Facebook story. Mm-hmm. So, do you ever go live? No, I don't. I'm too. I don't know whether it's nerves or like the perfection thing. Yeah, but I don't go live, and I know I should go live. Mm-hmm. Um, so another yeah. thing I'm working on. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, we we barely use it, and I know it's funny during the time. 
unless you've got a million followers. There's very few people that are actually going to tune in live. Yeah. But what I do find, and we've done it for, um, like, there's a grocery store that we do marketing for, 40 locations, and we do, like, lives at different events, charity events that they're a part right. of. And, no, like, you know, you, one person's joined, now they're gone. Two people joined, now they're gone. So yeah. it's, like, nothing during. But it, the video that comes out of it later, that actually gets quite a bit of views compared to a video post. Okay. We find that the reach of the live replay that's posted does really, really well. Right. Is that, and th- is that Facebook's algorithm pushing that out to people? I don't know. Maybe because they want you to use it. Yeah. yeah. Hard Maybe. to say. Yeah. All these things are really hard to say. Most yeah. people that, that know, it's just very, it's still very speculative. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. You, you can experiment and have yeah. an idea, but like by the time you figure it out, most of the time they're like, oh no, we changed it. Like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> well, again, it's like going back to the borrowed platform thing that you have to push people off of your social mm-hmm attract them that's how i've been starting to do it is yeah. attracting them to the social and then pushing them off because yeah. and are, what are you doing now are you putting them into email or are you just getting them onto the site in general i'm just getting right now i'm getting them onto the site in general mm-hmm. um i'm going to start to get them onto an email um i just in my head for some reason i don't know why that an email list for a health professional is kind of weird it mm-hmm. seems almost like too salesy right. i don't know um but I'm coming around to the idea of actually like creating a larger email list that isn't just of my patients. Cause I have my mm-hmm. patients on an email list right. and I email to them periodically. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm now starting to come around to the idea of, okay, like let's get random people yeah. on an email list. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't like, I know your hesitation, but I would say that based on how you fundamentally are putting out content yeah. and how you're doing content marketing, real content marketing, I don't think you're going to have a problem. Okay. If you just follow the guidelines that you're already using from a content marketing standpoint right. with email, you're fine. Just essentially. You can ask every once in a while. Right. Mostly give. Right. And essentially then, just put a post onto an email. Okay. That's, that's all it is. Yeah. And some people will never care about the Instagram or they don't go on or they right. whatever. And then, but the email is great. And, but I think is a little bit more, is a little bit more practical hands-on content. Mm-hmm. than general social. Right. But I think you're doing a lot of practical hands-on content anyway. I'm trying. I think just purposing it for videos. Is, okay. Uh, and then putting that into an email is a great yeah. a great place to play. Okay. One thing I will recommend is, and some people won't like this, don't use MailChimp. Okay. It's too basic. Okay. It's okay to start, yeah. but keep a, a list segmented of patients and non-patients. Yeah. I like, so here's the thing. You don't know what you're going to be doing in two years right. or five years or 10 exactly. years. So that email list being agnostic to this brand, mm-hmm. or this location or this thing is mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. So even as I'm thinking about social media house, like we, so we've got, we're launching, there's something else coming up, which mm-hmm. is a cool software product. And I was like, wait, is that product going to be like, you're opting into the, the product? Right. Or is it going to be like you're opting into the founder's email list that's right. to do with the product? Right. And that's the answer. Okay. Put it under your brand. Okay. Yeah. Donald's brand. Yeah. Because what will happen is if you're pitching, if you're always sending from some other brand and then you try and change later, you get a bunch of, a bunch of fallback, like a bunch of pushback on it, right. which is not great. So get them under that and then use an email system that allows you to tag and assign okay. values to people. Okay. So what I mean by that is, so you've got a, a patient thing. So when you upload your list of patients, yeah. you mark them as patient. Yeah. And if even if you come out with an automatic system for like when they become a new patient, there's a Zapier or some integration that makes I them come into the list. I just found out actually through Laura Tucker, Tucker about Zapier like last week. Yeah. It's so I haven't like looked at it, but it's something that I'm going and to. And it may or may not integrate with wherever you're keeping your patient data anyway. Yeah. But they're always making new stuff. Yeah. So if you can, if, if you're your system is like, hey, this new patient comes in, Zapier is like, hey, give me that email, I'll bring them over here. But when they go into the email list, mm-hmm. have them be tagged as, something as patient, right? or have them be tagged as like the, the, um, the stretching at work right. list or the whatever right. different content feeds. And the content might go to the same people, but right. you might find that there's like a really specific 200 people or 50 people or five people, it doesn't matter, where you're like, hmm, the thing I'm going to put out, I don't really want them to see it. 
Right. And if they're part of a big list, it's a pain. Yeah. If you do it on MailChimp and you have to have like, and I think MailChimp can do it. It's just, I just find their interface kind of rudimentary for it. I don't with like MailChimp. With a lot of good CRMs, you can say like, hey, this is going out to the entire list minus people that are tagged with this. Right. Or have this identifier. So if it's like a promotion on like coming in. Yeah. Or like, hey, I've got an extra spot next week. If anyone yeah. wants to fill it, and if you're sending that email, then that shouldn't go to majority of the people. Right. And so having the ability to segment that without having it like send this email to this list and then mm -hmm. this slightly different email to that list, it's right. a pain in the ass. Yeah. So if you can tag people as they're coming into the ecosystem, which like, we use Active Campaign. Active Campaign. It's a little okay. bit expensive, but we're using it for like drip sequences and a lot more stuff right but you can use something that's like in between mailchimp and and Active okay. campaign there's a lot of great products yeah as long as you have the ability to tag the person when they join a list right yeah i did a couple of like emails that i've sent out to my patients i've done a, some from mailchimp and i really hate it i also don't like the way um, I find it very limited. I like pretty things mm -hmm. and I find it very limited on like the design aspect, right. which I actually quite like doing. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I like to, that's a little bit of like my creative out. Like I find designing landing pages, like my creative outlet. I don't really know why, Got it. Um, but whatever. <laughs> it's good. Um, and so I was at, cause my website is through Wix, which I know yeah. is not the greatest, but when I was setting it up, it was the most user friendly to sure. use. So that's what I went with. Yep. And I actually liked designing the emails through Wix. Mm -hmm. I did a couple, um, but they're very limited on like, you can only send three a month, which I didn't think was very many. Right. And there's no tagging system. Yeah. Like you have a list and that's all you have. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I tried it and mm -hmm. then I went back to MailChimp, but yeah. I still don't love MailChimp. So yeah. <laughs> what I will say is like we, so what we do, sometimes we create some email components for people mm -hmm. and the reason we do that is the drag and drop builder in any platform is always going to be a piece of shit mm -hmm. like i i here's the bulky thing and then i try and pull this image the right size yeah it's never great yeah but what you can do is pre-make components okay so i make banners that are like so depending on what categories of things you're talking about right like in the news or like things I'm reading, right? whatever it is, I create a custom banner with like a picture of something that's overlaid with a color and it's got the title on yeah. it. And that is a pre-made JPEG. Okay. And it lives in my email system. So when I'm making an email, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something about podcasts I'm listening to. So I'll grab the banner that's podcasts Podcast. I'm listening to, but it's styled and it's one piece and it's oh, done. Okay, yeah. So make the, make the components especially where they're layered components yeah. make them outside of the platform yeah and then bring the elements in right and then you can just be like oh move this I picture like now one. yeah and then that picture might have like a cut angle on it so then you just put a basic text box underneath but it still has that cut style right look. yeah and then you just enter text yeah and then you put another cut banner yeah. or this or that so make those layered pieces, pieces outside yeah bring them import them in and then they always live there. right and I've done can, a little canva work not a ton yeah but i like it Yep. I like Canva. Yeah, and so that's how I would do it. And then that makes the drag and drop not be it's so drag and drop -y. boring and <laughs> kind of flat and, and yeah. obvious that it's drag and drop. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing when I get I don't want it to be obvious as obvious mm -hmm. that I'm sending a mass email. And yeah. I find like when you first of all, the footer on a MailChimp is so obvious and hideous. Yeah. <laughs> like why is it so <laughs> ugly? <laughs> and like I don't I don't like how it's like so overtly a mass email. Right. Um so yeah, I think I need to look into other yeah. forums for Yeah, it. there's things like um Drip is really good. Um Active Campaign is good. Active Campaign's but we pay like I think it's like eighty bucks US a month. Right. For twenty five hundred contacts. Which, if you're leveraging that, yeah, and depending on the product, like for you, it's like it's like keeping people in touch with you, yeah, continuing relationships, nurturing yeah. new relationships. But it's not so much like you can be like, hey, I've got this quick thing, yeah, that you can have, talk do on the phone with me. Like if they're not in your physical proximity physical it's a yeah. little bit harder so even if you have 2500 what are the people that can actually come in yeah it's you're a little bit more restricted with that so yeah. i would say that's probably too expensive overall yeah but if you you could probably f probably find something for like 30 to 40 bucks a month right you know actually you might check out um 
there's a company called AppSumo. Okay. They're out of Austin. They their website is like Groupon for entrepreneurs. Oh, interesting. So okay. they find up and coming. So the Mailchimp's competitor that just started two years ago and they're not established. Right. And they book deals with them that are lifetime prices on the products. Oh, interesting. So you might just keep an eye on their emails to be yeah. like, hey, so th- someone's email campaign thing. You yeah. buy it lifetime for forty bucks. Right. And we, I've got seven hundred dollars worth of those because we wow. don't. I don't know when I'm going to use it. I've got like chat bots for Facebook. Right. That I paid fifty bucks for. I've never used it. Right. But I know that if I have a customer that wants it then, I, it then I've got it and it was 50 bucks and it's forever right and so I, I stack them up because I that's part of what I do right but you might look on there for like something up and coming right that that's has a like idea. a good like a 650 you know 40 to 50 bucks one time forever mm-hmm. and then you lock in because you get it when it's new right I mean the only risk that you run is eventually they might be like hey we didn't make it like we're gonna be shutting down right and you just take your list out and deal with it deal with but it. I've never bought one to date, I've been buying them off that site for about four years. I've never bought anything that's stopped. Okay. Yet. Okay. And I bought a lot of crap. So, <laughs> so yeah, maybe take those. a look. Just keep an eye on their yeah. email yeah. list. They've got they've got some good stuff, and you okay. might find something that you get a good great yeah. deal on. I hate Mailchimp. Yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good if you have no technical or like marketing skill. Yeah. And, and look, there's, I'm sure there's the enterprise version that big companies use and it's amazing. Oh, I'm sure. I just, there's something, even just, there's a visual component of it. I'm like, eh, yeah. don't like it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anyway, I agree. On a dark note to end it. I know, shit. Sorry, um, Where can people find you? Um, I am Dr. Donald Littlewood on Facebook and Instagram and www.drdonaldlittlewood.com. Awesome. Well, we'll yeah. link it up in the notes. Awesome. And uh, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Awesome, bro. Thanks. Thanks so much.